Big thanks for your support, guys. Your likes, views, comments. And as a token of our appreciation, we've prepared an awesome surprise. We've collabed with a few professional artists and designers to make six posters depicting some of our most iconic builds. And we're giving you the opportunity to buy a digital copy of one of those posters. And at a bargain price, just two dollars a piece. And if you order all six posters at once, the entire set is only gonna cost you ten dollars. After payment goes through, the posters will be emailed to you in high resolution. You can print them, hang them on your wall, or give them as a gift. By purchasing these posters, you will really help support our channel in these difficult times. The more of these posters we are able to sell, the more great content we will be able to make for you in the future. So if you want to support our channel, go ahead and buy a digital download. Links in the description. Hey there, fellows. Okay, so this car is wet. We just recently brought it in. Hasn't quite dried, it's just raining outside. It's a lot of surprise, surprise. As for what we're doing with it? Well, it should make for a pretty interesting experiment. Now, we've used these cars for pretty much anything you can possibly imagine. We've swapped in a bunch of different engines. But today's idea is going to be something special. We've got our hands on this wonderful motorcycle. So, yeah, we got a motorcycle that was involved in a light crash. And here's the deal. That's an 1100cc engine. It's a good one with plenty of torque and horsepower. To the tune of 140 plus. It's very light. And so here's what we've decided we're gonna do. Why not pluck the engine out and uh, fit it to a lot of Yes, similar projects are out there. Including some that are local to our town. As for how successful those turned out, well, uh, usually they're swept under the rug. Haven't seen a single one completed. Okay, so let's grab the heart from this bike and uh, slap it into that lot -um And see how the thing is gonna drive. Yeah, this is gonna turn out wicked. Let's do this. We fit a superbike motor to a drift spec lot -um. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. One hundred kilos, one hundred and fifty kilos. So here's the engine we removed from that motorcycle. And uh, here's what's up. You'll notice that, um, size-wise, it is not a match for the Lada motor. And this is with the gearbox. Compare it to the Lada engine with a box that's like this long. And also weighs a whole lot. This weighs a lot less, and uh, makes quite a bit more power. This engine was never designed to be used in a car. But we're still gonna try and get there. And the result should be pretty interesting. Let's get to work. As far as I know, many folks, uh, I mean, even a lot of the people I've talked to didn't believe we would get there. But I think you'll always make it as long as you're not lazy. The engine is in. And if you were to pop the hood, assuming this had one, a person would look at the engine and be like, oh, what do we have here? It actually looks pretty organic. We didn't modify much. The subframe as the old one was too wide. And it wouldn't allow to bring the engine down. It was getting in the way of the oil pan, but we made it work. So we had to slightly low bottomize it. But the engine is in a great position now. And the subframe itself, uh, yeah, it's more slender. And the shape is a far cry from what it used to be. That being said, it hasn't compromised rigidity in the slightest. It hasn't gotten any heavier. After all, subtract here, uh, add there. We did cut it in one spot, but we reinforced it in another. Anyway, the subframe is just as stiff as it used to be. It's all good. As for the upper brackets, well, you've got a very clear view of those. Up here you've got three, actually it's uh, four mounting points. 
So the engine is sitting in the engine bay of this car the same way it was in that motorcycle, pretty much. We didn't miss a single mounting point, we got it bolted in. Also, we've uh, reinforced all of the brackets. The engine is nice and secure, and it's in its final position. But you can see that the output shaft is not exactly on center. And as such, we need to set up a prop shaft to fit an intermediate bearing, sort of uh, set the angle straight somehow. We can't make them too dramatic, though, because uni joints are not gonna work at sharp angles, so that'll be a bit of a headache. And with this being a motorcycle engine uh, borrowed from a motorcycle that wasn't a big cruiser but was rather a sports bike, this doesn't have a reverse gear. So with this box in there, it looks like we won't have a reverse gear. And there's the problem with the prop shaft being all broken up and kinked. We're gonna need a one mighty intermediate bearing, but we have a good idea. We had this gearbox lying around in storage. It's for Mitsubishi. And so this here unit, after we trim it to some extent and uh, install it, that's what's going to act as the section in question, with the intermediate bearing and the reverse function. We do want to be able to put the car into reverse. In addition to that, if something were to fold under excess load, this will keep us with a set of gears. As you might have guessed, fourth here is a one-to-one, -one, and so it'll be constantly running in fourth or put into reverse if we need to. Yes, the car is going to be moving super slowly, but at least it will be able to back up. And if we were to use third, essentially that's a low range. We'll be able to ease a bit of stress off of that motorcycle box, and it'll make for quite a bit of fun when rowing through the gears. But the main function for this will be uh, serving as an intermediate bearing and providing a reverse gear. Okay, now it's a matter of setting this up and uh, seeing how it do. Let's carry on. Okay, so just like I promised, a piece of gearbox is serving as the intermediate bearing. This is how we've set this up, because the prop shafts are angled differently, and the internals of this are what's bringing it all together. We've got five forward gears and one reverse in there, that's gonna allow the car to back up. You see, the thing is that motorcycle gearboxes uh, simply don't have a reverse gear. Here we have a screamer pipe for the exhaust. We had to do a bit of welding around here, the manifold had to be modified, that's just a bit of 60mm pipe for the dump, and uh, nothing else in the meantime, though we might want to set up a full exhaust, with how loud this is gonna be. I mean, they have noise restrictions at events anyway, which this thing might not comply with otherwise. It might not be able to pass scrutineering. Now as for how we set up the shift mechanism. We are reusing the original arm that was on the motorcycle, and that's combined with a cable for an automatic gearbox. And so that's the setup that's going to handle shifting duties. The arm is going to move up and down, right? You move your foot down for first, and up for the rest of them. In this case, we've got a handle that's going to allow all of this to work, and what resulted is actually akin to a sort of a sequential gearbox. It's quite a pleasant thing to play around with when you're in the driver's seat. The key thing here is that it's a simple setup, and uh, the simpler, the more reliable. And so as you can see, we've uh, done everything up here, all of the plumbing and so on. The cool thing is that we've got the battery in here as well. I mean, it is a tiny one for a motorcycle, so it's all good. We're still running the stock heater. We've connected some hoses, the water pump provides good flow, plenty of circulation. So it's gonna be nice and warm inside the car. Oh yeah, I should also mention that the radiator we got in there is actually a repurposed intercooler. It has got excellent flow characteristics. 
Bear in mind that a motorcycle engine is not going to need the same coolant volume as one for a car, so this sort of radiator will very much suffice. Well, that's the hope at least. But then our experience tells us that it will work. We've got an overflow tank, everything is good. Just like on a regular car. Now the only drawback here is that the airbox... You see, the position of the engine in a motorcycle is uh, quite different compared to a car. And as such, in that application the airbox would have been concealed. In this case, though, it's not going to fit under the hood. As a result, the hood is going to have to be trimmed. Okay, so we've had a look around here, now let's take a look at the interior. What have we got in there? A steering wheel, a single racing bucket seat. Here's the gear shifter handbrake. And here's another gear shifter, or the quasi-intermediate bearing, or the gearbox section. And that's about it. And uh, this is why I said it's similar to a sequential box. This is how we're going to change gear. And uh, downshift. This is how we downshift. All the way down to first. And there's neutral. This is pretty neat. Now I just want to drive around and see how it behaves. So let's go ahead and start the engine, warm it up, and head outside. Okay. It runs. Albeit it is quite noisy. Can you hear? What? Can you hear? Yeah. All right then, let's go ahead. Okay, engage first in this box. And also in the other box as well. I have no idea how it'll drive. And we're off! First plus first, and we are really crawling. But no surprises, I mean, this thing has got a total of 30 gears. Because you got six in that one and five down here. Now first is a really slow gear, so I suggest we try second gear. Right, we'll put this one into first. Now let's see. Now the awesome thing about motorcycles is that you can uh, shift with no clutch. All you have to do is let off. There you go, see? Terrific. I mean, as soon as you let off, you will uh, get your gear. No need to even press the clutch. And that is just the best, like, holy cow. Imagine how quick the shifts are gonna be. No joke, this is our first drive. That was second. Now let's try third. Let's see what it... Now that is... This has gotten interesting. Very interesting indeed. Very nice. And you got those nice crisp shifts. And they're quick too. This is so cool. We got car alarms sounding off. Блин, круто. 
Awesome. Love it. This thing properly rips. So that was fourth gear. And now... Better not hit anybody. And there we are, now I just... If you need to crawl, like, go very slowly? Well, we're about to do just that. First here, first there. And we're off! Engine braking is great while going downhill. It's like driving some kind of ATV. Holy cow, with both boxes in first. But then of course when you've got 30 gears. Anyway. What was that noise? That was the gearbox winding up. Went into hyperspeed? Wow, this turned out to be a really fun thing. Terrific, I love it. Okay then. Wow, the silence feels so nice. It's like something just went down. Okay guys, this turned out very well indeed. Like honestly, this thing is a weapon. The way it slingshots and let me tell you, we won't even need to do clutch kicks. You punch it and already it's lighting up the tires. And the shift action. You work the pedal like so. You don't even need to press the clutch or anything. It is awesome. Yeah guys, this car is lit. That drive was such a delightful experience, man. That was great. Okay, that's all I got for you. We got this to work beautifully. And to the naysayers who thought we wouldn't get a motorcycle engine to work in a car, there you are, we installed one. Everything works. Granted, we might run into certain issues once we start properly using the thing. And uh, we might have to make some revisions, modifications and such. We'll definitely keep you posted on all of that. But that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.